Everyone is going gaga for Gabriel Slanina of the Chicago Fire. The 17-year-old 6'5 goalkeeper has kept four clean sheets in 10 games with a penalty save to cap it all off. After losing a promising 20-year-old dual national David Ochoa to Mexico, Slanina is a sliver of hope and has quickly become the new up-and-comer on the minds of USM&T fans. Today we're going to talk about Slanina and I'm going to show you his strengths and some of the things that are currently holding him back from absolute greatness. So what's up everyone? I'm Jake and this is FIFA America. I'm currently working towards my UEFA B license in England, but I do love to break down coaching strategies and players, especially as it relates to the US men's national team. So make sure to hit the like button if you learn anything new so more people can find this video as well. And if you want to see more breakdowns like this, then make sure to subscribe to the channel. Let me know down below in the comments what you think of Gabriel Slanina. And if you want to support the channel even further, see videos like this before they're out on YouTube to the general public and get other cool benefits like channel badges, USMNT emojis, and comment priority on videos. You can click the join button below that's next to subscribe or you can find the link down below in the video description. So in order to break down Slanina's play effectively, the first thing we need to understand is why it's usually difficult for young keepers to break through. Usually the prime of a goalkeeper's career is in their late 20s to mid 30s, whereas the field players usually hit their primes from ages 25 to 28. Why is that? At their most effective, goalkeepers rely on a few different things, including their athletic and reflexive abilities, but what's really important is their communication, their decision making, and their maturity. They usually get better with age and experience on the field. So when you were 17, did you have the best communication? Did you have great decision making abilities? And were you mature enough to make important decisions in a pressure filled situation on behalf of a team? The answer is probably not. And it's one of the reasons why young goalkeepers usually need to wait their turn, even if they show promising athletic and technical ability. Now, the other principle that wraps all of this together is probably something that every sports fan inherently understands, but has never really stopped to think about what it is or why that happens. So I'm going to use a clip that we used to show Yunus Musa's passing ability against Costa Rica to center on this principle. And whether you're a soccer fan or you watch hockey or basketball, or really any team with an attacker and a defender, the attacking player who is facing the attacking end should have priority. So let me show you what I mean by that. In this clip, Yunus Musa is facing backwards to his own goal, but recognizes that Tyler Adams should have the ball. The goal is to score and protect your own goal from being scored on. So the player that is facing that attacking part of the field or court or rink or whatever, they will have a better success rate at moving the object closer to the attacking goal and further away from the goal that you're defending. Now let me ask you, which player on the soccer field is always facing the attacking end of the pitch? It's the goalkeepers. Because of this principle in soccer, the goalkeepers have a responsibility for 100% of the game for organizing and communicating with their team because they see the entire field for the whole game, unlike the other 10 players on their team. So in a professional game, would you rather trust a 17-year-old or a 30-year-old with that level of importance? Which is why it's on the one hand very rare to see young goalkeepers start, and also exciting to see Gabriel Slanina already getting experience for a professional team in MLS. Slanina already excels in a few very exciting areas, and for a young goalkeeper, you won't be surprised to hear that he has excellent reflexes and moves his 6'5 frame incredibly quickly. So let's look at some of his best reflexive saves and parallel that with Donnarumma, who is another very young goalkeeper showing this attribute.
Now let's take a look at his basic positioning and start to move into one of his best attributes as a young goalie, which is his aggression and decision making. He's extremely quick to come off his line and reminds me of a young and crazy Manuel Neuer. So that's who we're going to pair with this. I hope you also notice how incredibly brave he is, not just at going into the challenges, but making sure he gets the ball above all else. For a young goalkeeper, Slanina also has great command of his box already, and you can tell how much he organizes and communicates with his defenders, and there are very few gaffes on set pieces in their defending zones. Now, I do realize I've used two of the best goalkeepers in the world in Donnarumma and Neuer to showcase Slanina's skills, but let's pump the brakes a little bit and look at one of Gabriel Slanina's weaknesses, which I think is his distribution while passing out of the back and his strength in kicking. 
Out of all the dead balls and goal kicks, I could see very few of Slanina's kicks that made it any further than the halfway line. Especially under pressure, Slanina's kicks need to improve, and if he wants to join up with the senior national team at some point, we've seen how with Matt Turner, who has been poor historically with his feet, improving to the point of service where he is the starter on the US men's national team. So Slanina should look to work on this in the offseason and cover a huge gap in his game. So that's it for our breakdown on Gabriel Slanina. He's an extremely exciting prospect and one of the best that I've seen come out of one of these US academies. It also shows that he's 17 years old, already starting and playing for the Chicago Fire. Four clean sheets out of 10 games is quite good as well for a young goalkeeper. So hopefully he keeps this up, builds his confidence and works on some of those weaker parts of his game in the off season. But with that, I will just ask you one more time to hit the like button so more people can find this. If you enjoyed this breakdown and want to see more, make sure to subscribe to the channel and I will see everyone next time. Hopefully this weekend I'll get some more videos out. Hope you have a great rest of your day. See ya.